if you want to enter into life, because remember, life is relationship and death is separation. If you want to enter into life, into real relationship with God, he says, keep the commandments. A little bit of a play on words. Because we know the commandments are good. We know the moral law is good, right? But how good have you done in keeping the commandments throughout your life? As you look at the Ten Commandments, have you actually kept any of them? We've talked about this many times over the years. And as we go through the list of the Ten Commandments, we can lie to ourselves and think we're doing okay. But even the worst one from a physical perspective that you think, hey, I got this one right. I didn't commit murder. One of the Ten Commandments says don't commit murder. What did Jesus say? In the book of Matthew, earlier on, he says, if you have hatred in your heart for somebody, what do you have? You're already in danger of judgment. So even the one out of the ten you think you got right, you didn't even get that. So Jesus, it's almost almost facetious, it's almost uh, uh, sarcastic. He says, hey, just keep the commandments, Jesus says, because he knew where this guy was going. And so he says to keep the commandments. And so in verse 18, this man who had come up to him, he says, which ones? I think the answer would be all of them. And so which ones, he asked him, Jesus answered, Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so if you look at kind of the framework of what these commands already gave, they're all external ones, aren't they? Obviously they start within the heart, but they're lived out externally, okay? And so Jesus said, hey, here's the ones you need to keep. And so in the midst of that, he responds this, who we know is going to in a moment is going to be this rich young ruler. He says, I have kept all of these, the young man told him. What do I still lack? Let me give you a thought here. Number one, he had not kept all of them. But according to the Jewish tradition, he had done pretty good. But him, like us, we, we are self-deceived when we think we get all the commandments right because nobody's always honored their mother and father. Nobody has ever completely obeyed their parents. Nobody has, has ever not had hatred in their heart towards someone which really is um, murder. He says, don't commit adultery. And Jesus said, remember, hey, if you have lust in your heart for someone, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Don't steal. I, I would say in this room, while we wouldn't call ourselves thieves or pocket pickers or bank robbers, we've all taken something in our life that didn't belong to us, irrespective, irrespective of the value, right? And, and so we're guilty of these things, but this man, he says, I've kept all of these. But he asked a good question, what do I still lack? Here's what's interesting about Jesus. Jesus could have went back and told him where he'd messed up on all of these last ones. He could have went through that list. He said, hey, I've kept all of these. But instead, Jesus decided to if I could use the word, hit him with one that got to the heart. And so he says, I've kept all of these. The young man told him, what do I still lack? In verse 21, Jesus says, if you want to be perfect, because outside of Christ, outside of Jesus, you've got to be perfect. And the problem is nobody from history past, as we learned even in VBS this week, starting with Adam and Eve, everyone has sinned. Everyone has rejected and rebelled against what God demands. And so outside of Jesus, nobody can be perfect. And so he said, if you want to be perfect, Jesus said to him, go sell your belongings and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard that, he went away grieving because he had many possessions. So you're like, wait a second, what, is this, what does this mean for us? What is he trying to say here? Well, the bottom line was this man externally was trying to keep the outward points of the law. He tried to look good on the outside. But what Jesus did is he went to his heart. If, if you repent and trust Jesus as your Savior, is, is this passage saying that you've got to give all of your money away and live poor for the rest of your life? Well, maybe. I'm not going to completely say that. But the point is, when you trust Christ, you got to realize that nothing is your own. The reality is he loved his money, which was one of his many idols, more than Christ. One of the things God continues to convict me of in my life as I walk with the Lord is whatever I have ultimately is not mine. And I must be willing to surrender or submit it for whatever Christ wants. Is Christ going to take your whole bank account? That could happen, 
But what I've had to understand in my life is I've got to be willing, whatever God wants to use it for, it needs to be for his glory. But the point he was making here is this, that you say you're right with me. You say you're keeping these outward commandments, but your inward heart is still one of covetousness because money was still his God, his idol, instead of Jesus being his God, his Savior. And so he went to the inside. And then after that, he went away grieving because he had many possessions because he realized he loved his money more than he loved God. Could you use other things in place of money? Absolutely. There's all kind of things in life we give priority. And I think in different seasons of life, we do need to be honorable and love our family and take care of our family. And if you can make a good living, all of those things are great and honorable. But never should they be a higher priority than the good news of Jesus and entrusting him. And so just after that, when he heard that and he went away grieving because he had many possessions because his inward soul was still dirty, even on the outside he was trying to look good. Verse 23, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. He actually took it to a next level here. He says, again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. So it's almost like Jesus said this, and then he drove it down by an exaggerated point. Here's, here's what he meant. He said, listen, it is impossible, specifically in this point, for a rich man to go to heaven. So if you're here and maybe you have a few more dollars than everyone else, you're saying, wait, wait, I can't go to heaven because I'm not rich. That's not the ultimate point he's making. Here, here's what that looked like in that day and age. You see, those who were rich, rich were considered blessed by God. Now, today we know there's a lot of people that have a lot of money that, man, they don't follow God at all. So I think we can step away from that. But in that day and time, that was one attribute of being blessed by God. If you had a lot of money, man, you're blessed. I actually had a, uh, a man say to me, he sent me a message. I preached a funeral uh, for someone many years ago. And after the funeral was over, he sent me a message. I think, I can't remember, social media. He sent me this message. He says, man, that, that message you gave was great preacher. And man, I, I think what you said was true. He says, but I don't think I need to do what you've said because I'm making so much money. God's blessing me. So I don't think I need to do what you're telling me to do because God must be blessing me because I'm, I'm making all kind of money. And he was. He was rolling in the dough, man. He was making a great living, had a lot of businesses. And, and I had to lovingly tell him that this wealth that we have physically, whatever it may look like, is always only temporary. But he felt like he was blessed because he'd had a lot of money. And so he didn't really need to do what I was saying of saying, turn from your sin and trust in Jesus to submit to him as your savior. And so also with this man here, while he was trying to look good on the outside, his heart was still committed to the things of the world versus Jesus. In that verse 24, he actually just makes this exaggerated point. Some people have turned it different ways, but he was literally talking about a camel and he's literally talking about the eye of a needle. I don't know about you, but I don't sew very often. But when I was young, I could thread a, a hook or a needle pretty easy. But now that I'm older, it's getting tougher to find that hole to thread the eye of a needle or a hook or anything, right? Jesus was making this exaggerated point that a camel can get through the eye of a needle easier than a rich person can go to heaven. Why? If a rich person trusts in their own wealth. This wasn't just about rich people. And so here was the disciples' response in verse 25. He says, when the disciples heard this, they were utterly astonished. You know why they were utterly astonished? Because they thought that if someone was truly wealthy, physically speaking, with money, man, they had to be blessed by God. And so they couldn't believe that Jesus would say that. That was like a slap in the face of the culture. And so when the disciples heard this, they were utterly astonished and asked, if they can't be saved more or less, who can be saved? So they thought, oh, man, if this rich man can't be saved, man, we're all done. Because he's got to be blessed by God. He made a lot of money. And so they say, who can be saved if this rich man can't be saved? He was actually going to be the perfect church member, man. He was young. He was influential. He had money. He had all this stuff. And Jesus says, yeah, yeah you're, you're missing the whole point. You look good on the outside, but what I'm looking for is someone who's willing to humble themselves like a child to have their heart changed. And so when the disciples heard this, they were utterly astonished and asked them, who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, 
this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Sometimes what we miss in this passage in Matthew 18 is we see the story of the child, and then we read the narrative of this rich young ruler, and we miss that it's there after one another on purpose. Because it's a great contrast between the simple, trusting child who will simply believe what God has made clear and the influencer, the rich, the man who's on the who's who's list, who has all the money, who's really depending on himself to try to be right with God and get into heaven. So these two passages are really a contrast. And the problem is while you or I may not be wealthy and rich like the rich young ruler to that extent, it is easier for us to fall into that category and trusting in ourselves that we'll make our own way and we'll figure out how to be right with God on our own terms than simply trusting like a child. So today, I think the question is for you and for me, which one of these two contrasts are you? Have you come to this place, no matter what your age, whether you are a child or whether you're retired or anywhere in between, that you've come to this place where God has humbled you and you've simply received the gift of Jesus and he's the only one who can bless you eternally? Or are you like the majority of the world who wants to look good and wealthy on the outside and say, hey, I've kept all the right rules, but on the inside, your heart's never been made new. You've never been born again, as Jesus said. You've, you've never turned and trusted like a child. And so that's the difference between the two. It's really this powerful contrast that whatever we have to turn away from or even give up in this life to trust Christ, it's worth it. That's why it's so important that we not only communicate the good news of Jesus to children because their hearts are softer and more tender than some of us as we get older, as we get cynical, as we get set in our ways, as we get more arrogant. The pride continues to set in the older we get, doesn't it? It's easier. It's actually, we have to fight pride more as we get older than we do even when we were younger. When we were a small child, we just simply trusted and listened and responded to the message.